The sites where two skeletal elements come together are termed joints. The two general categories of joints. Synovial joints. The skeletal elements are separated by a cavity. Solid joints. There is no cavity and the components are held together by connective tissue. Synovial joints are connections between skeletal components where the elements involved are separated by a narrow articular cavity. In addition to containing an articular cavity, these joints have a number of characteristic features. First, a layer of cartilage, usually high aligned cartilage, covers the articulating surfaces of the skeletal elements. In other words, bony surfaces do not normally contact one another directly. As a consequence, when these joints are viewed in normal radiographs, a wide gap seems to separate the adjacent bones because the cartilage that covers the articulating surfaces is more transparent to X-rays than bone. A second characteristic feature of synovial joints is the presence of a joint capsule consisting of an inner synovial membrane and an outer fibrous membrane. The synovial membrane attaches to the margins of the joint surfaces at the interface between the cartilage and bone and encloses the articular cavity. The synovial membrane is highly vascular and produces synovial fluid which percolates into the articular cavity and lubricates the articulating surfaces. Closed sacs of synovial membrane also occur outside joints, where they form synovial bursae or tendon sheets. Bursae often intervene between structures such as tendons and bone, tendons and joints, or skin and bone. Reduce the friction of one structure moving over the other. Tendon sheaths surround tendons and also reduce friction. The fibrous membrane is formed by dense connective tissue and surrounds and stabilizes the joint. Parts of the fibrous membrane may thicken to form ligaments, which further stabilize the joint. Ligaments outside the capsule usually provide additional reinforcement. Another common but not universal feature of synovial joints is the presence of additional structures within the area enclosed by the capsule or synovial membrane, such as articular discs, usually composed of fibrocartilage, fat pads, and tendons. Articular discs absorb compression forces, adjust to changes in the contours of joint surfaces during movements, and increase the range of movements that can occur at joints. Fat pads usually occur between the synovial membrane and the capsule and move into and out of regions as joint contours change during movement. Redundant regions of the synovial membrane and fibrous membrane allow for large movements at joints. Synovial joints are described based on shape and movement. Based on the shape of their articular surfaces, synovial joints are described as plain, flat, hinge, pivot, bicondylar, two sets of contact points, condylar, ellipsoid, saddle, and ball and socket. Based on movement, synovial joints are described as uniaxial movement in one plane, biaxial movement in two planes, and multiaxial movement in three planes. Hinge joints are uniaxial, whereas ball and socket joints are multiaxial. Plane joints allow sliding or gliding movements when one bone moves across the surface of another. A chromioclavicular joint. Hinge joints 
Allow movement around one axis that passes transversely through the joint. Permit flexion and extension. Elbow, humeral ulnar joint. Pivot joints. Allow movement around one axis that passes longitudinally along the shaft of the bone. Permit rotation. Atlantoaxial joint. Bicondylar joints. Allow movement mostly in one axis with limited rotation around a second axis, formed by two convex condyles that articulate with concave or flat surfaces. Knee joint. Condylar, ellipsoid joints. Allow movement around two axes that are at right angles to each other. Permit flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, and circumduction, limited. Wrist joint. Saddle joints. Allow movement around two axes that are at right angles to each other. The articular surfaces are saddle shaped. Permit flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, and circumduction. Carpometacarpal joint of the thumb. Ball and socket joints. Allow movement around multiple axes. Permit flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, circumduction, and rotation. Hip join. Solid joints are connections between skeletal elements where the adjacent surfaces are linked together either by fibrous connective tissue or by cartilage, usually fibrocartilage. Movements at these joints are more restricted than at synovial joints. Fibrous joints include sutures, gomphoses, and syndesmoses. Sutures occur only in the skull where adjacent bones are linked by a thin layer of connective tissue termed a sutural ligament. Gomphoses occur only between the teeth and adjacent bone. In these joints, short collagen tissue fibers in the periodontal ligament run between the root of the tooth and the bony socket. Syndesmoses are joints in which two adjacent bones are linked by a ligament. Examples are the ligamentum, flavum, which connects adjacent vertebral laminae, and an interosseous membrane, which links, for example, the radius and ulna in the forearm. Cartilaginous joints include synchondroses and symphyses. Synchondroses occur where two ossification centers in a developing bone remain separated by a layer of cartilage, for example, the growth plate that occurs between the head and shaft of developing long bones. These joints allow bone growth and eventually become completely ossified. Symphyses occur where two separate bones are interconnected by cartilage. Most of these types of joints occur in the midline and include the pubic symphysis between the two pelvic bones and intervertebral discs between adjacent vertebrae.